So the work in this paper um, is in response in part to the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, where countries have agreed to attempt to limit their um, greenhouse gas emissions um, with the aim of achieving a long-term temperature goal. So in the paper, um, we treat the different um, greenhouse gases slightly differently to, to how GWP usually does. So usually GWP or GWP 100 uh, is just a single number and you say I have a methane emission, I multiply it by GWP and that's the CO2 equivalent emission, uh, thereby denoting equivalence between those two different greenhouse gases. Um, what we've shown is that, and this is not um, actually new, this is a, an issue that has been known for, for years, if not in fact decades, um, so you, if, you, if you do apply such equivalence you don't um, they're not, the equivalence is not based on the basis of warming. So they're not equivalent in terms of the warming that happens to the Earth as a result of those emissions. So if you emitted that methane um, or the CO2 equivalent of the methane, you wouldn't get the same temperature response based on GWP100. What we're proposing is a, uh, an alternative usage of the metric where you do get temperature equivalence. And we've done this by treating them, uh, taking into account the short lifetime of methane. So methane has a short lifetime of about 10 years in the atmosphere, whereas CO2 persists in the atmosphere and accumulates. So you don't get that ongoing effect with methane because it uh, reacts chemically in the atmosphere and then it's gone. So uh, the paper shows how we can um, take that into account uh, in the new metric called GWP star. Um, and then you get a much better representation of the temperature response um, in these CO2 equivalent emissions. So you have an emission of methane, you um, use GWP star to convert it to CO2 equivalent emissions, and then they do have a much more similar temperature response. So we think this is much more appropriate for assessing emissions and emissions reductions in terms of the long-term temperature goal of the Paris Agreement, because that's defined in terms of the warming in the future. So we were interested in this metric because it has good environmental integrity. In other words, the, emission, uh, the emissions are more truly equivalent in terms of that temperature change. And so it could be used um, more directly to relate emissions uh, and different countries' emissions and emissions targets with the temperature goal and how um, you progress towards that temperature goal. Um, it could also... Um, it, it's also in a way much more fair because of its relationship between emissions and temperature. So if you are really wanting to, if what you really care about is temperature and global warming, um, then you want to be uh, assessing your emissions in that framework and also you want to design policies and systems that penalise warming um, essentially and um, the and having a metric that actually links emissions with warming allows you to do that.